Hey, Dave, you just talk about how this came about, the, the, the conversations leading up to this, and, and then what your role actually will be as co-offensive coordinator. Well, I think what took place is obviously uh, when Coach Rochard left, I, uh, I was uh, interested, I was hopeful uh, that uh, Coach D'Antonio would have the confidence in me uh, to, to give me this title. Uh, I'm very appreciative of that confidence that, uh, confidence that uh, Coach has given me. Uh, but uh, at the same time, I'm sure you all read that he was not in any hurry to make a decision, which is, is always the way he goes about things. He's going to be very careful and deliberate uh, in the decisions he makes. Uh, Above all else, I think, or above most things, I guess you could say, staff is uh, staff and staff continuity and, and making the right decisions so we have uh, uh, the right people in the meeting rooms uh, is very, very important to them. Uh, so it was a long process. Uh, it seemed, uh, seemed like about a year and a half to me. Uh, but uh, And Coach D and I had some conversations throughout the, uh, the, the, the period where he was trying to make a decision. I, uh, I was hopeful as uh, the days went on and uh, uh, when news sort of broke, he didn't have any choice but to uh, let me know exactly what his plans were. Uh, as far as my, uh, uh, my responsibilities right now, uh, I'm going to obviously coach the running backs, uh, which would be nice, a nice change of pace for me. Uh, I'm going to be uh, uh, sort, of, uh, sort of leading things, I guess you could say, according to Coach D's uh, uh, words, leading things as we put a game plan together. Uh, I do want to emphasize that uh, uh, things really will not change as far as how we go about things during the week. I mean, we've always been an offensive staff that has uh, 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 worked together, build the game plan throughout the week. Uh, it's uh, input really from everybody on our offensive staff, uh, and uh, I see that being the case here as we move forward. Obviously, you've been here the whole time of coach. So first question is, on field, how is, are people going to see a difference with a Dave Warner offense, and then off the field, behind the scenes, what are some things that you hope to do differently? Well, I think uh, if you just, I think the things off the field lead to the things on the field. I think uh, obviously everybody, I'm sure, is looking to see uh, what we're going to do to uh, improve our offense, and uh, I think those things are still out there to be answered. Uh, certainly, I think uh, uh, if you look at what we did last year, we we came up short in a lot of cases, uh, scoring wise, and I think a lot of things uh, led to that. Uh, that's what spring practice is for over these next couple of weeks to, to figure out what we can do to improve that. And I'm sure a lot of it has to do with uh, being a little bit more creative, a little bit more imaginative uh, with our offense. Uh, but uh, it's still going to be Coach D'Antonio's offense. Uh, but uh, we are going to certainly tweak things and uh, adjust things a little bit to fit Coach D'Antonio's philosophy, but at the same time makes more productive. Coach, how much of it is it? Uh, an advantage for you having coached the quarterbacks now to be calling the plays, I assume, and, and putting the structure together. I've got to believe that that relationship you have with the quarterbacks is going to be a big plus. Yeah, it. Uh, I have uh, sort of inside knowledge, I guess you would say, just from spending time with these guys throughout the years. Uh, I know their strengths, their weaknesses. Uh, so certainly that helps. And uh, now uh, – I'll be uh, obviously spending more time with the running backs, get a feel for those guys. But at the same time, uh, Coach D'Antonio's philosophy is it frees me up a little bit more to, uh, to sort of get around everybody on our offense and uh, get a feel for everybody uh, across our offensive football team. And, uh, uh, and that certainly, all that helps in, in putting your offense together and putting your game plan together by knowing strengths and weaknesses of everybody. Dave, what's your understanding of how the duties will be split between uh, you and Coach Bowman as well? I, I know you, you've had a working relationship with, with him before a little bit, or, or at least have known him from before, but how do you see that chemistry going and maybe how, you know, breaking down with play calling? And yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. That's, uh, that's something that uh, I think we'll sort of figure out day by day. Uh, I've known Coach Bowman uh, since, uh, as I remember back, I think it was about 1985 when he was at uh, NC State, and I was at Kent State, uh, or is that Kent State, I guess, uh, Ran each other, recruiting, known each other. I've never worked together, but certainly uh, uh, know a lot of him, a lot about him. And uh, just throughout the last few days that we've had a chance to uh, uh, be together a couple days, and we've talked on the phone since spring break's taking place, uh, uh, I see it being a, a very good working relationship. And uh, how all that breaks down into the duties, uh, you know, that's just sort of something that we're going to work through. So uh, it's a day-by-day -day process for us. Dave, what characteristics make a good play caller? 
And when you look at a game, what makes you say, hey, that guy really did a good job calling plays? Uh, I guess probably the big thing that I think uh, makes a good play caller is a guy that uh, is able to think quick. Uh, certainly a lot of that has to go into the preparation, uh, being prepared as you, as you go into the game, uh, having a feel for your personnel, what they can do and what they can't do. Uh, but again, the, the, there'll be a lot of, uh, a lot of input from, from everybody on our staff. Uh, certainly when things are working, it makes it a lot easier to call plays. We know that. And, uh, uh, we struggled with that again this past year. So it's hard to call plays when all of a sudden you, you know, you're second and long a lot of times. I mean, that's hard for anybody, uh, as things tend to be successful and you're in your first down calls and so on and so forth. It just makes it a lot bit easier. So, uh, you know, it's just a feel thing, uh, but uh, a lot of it goes into uh, the preparation during the week. Dave, uh, obviously you were at UConn for a couple of years. And I think Mark mentioned yesterday that you also called plays at Kansas. Is that right? For a few years at Kansas, yes. Yeah. Uh, what, I, uh, I guess, what was the, you know, how did you grow as a play caller at that time? I mean, did, do you think of yourself now as a lot different in terms of your philosophy at all, you know, now versus then? Uh. Yeah, yeah, I guess, I guess, yes. I, th- I guess things have changed. Back at uh, Kansas, uh, I, I can certainly remember the first couple games I called that I know for sure weren't very good uh, by me. We still won, uh, but I just did not do a good job. Um, uh, a couple other places, uh, Bucknell, you, a couple other places, UConn, where I called plays, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, it was sort of a work in progress, you know. Uh, we were uh, Bucknell. We were pretty good, actually, in the in the Patriot League. But UConn, we were outmatched a lot, uh, so probably a little bit more aggressive. And uh, I can uh, I can see right here and now, though, uh, this is the this is the big spotlight, you know. So obviously, there's a lot of eyes on us, and uh, uh, this will be a little bit more pressure packed. I'm sure everybody's going to have their opinion, and uh, uh, that's part of the fun. That's part of the pressure. So uh, I don't know if things change a whole lot other than the fact that uh, uh, there's more eyes on us here. Coach, you mentioned the spotlight. One of the things Coach D'Antonio brought up yesterday was how well Andrew Maxwell handled that last year, and he attributed a lot of Maxwell's poise to you. Can you talk about Andrew Maxwell's ability to handle the poise? And also, my second part of the question is, how much does the play calling depend on the quarterbacks? And Do you want a standard offense, or do you think you'll be tailoring some of the play calling depending on packages or quarterbacks? Uh, first part of your question, as far as Andrew Maxwell, I've said this time and time again over the years that uh, Andrew's very mature young man. He's, he's been that way over the years, uh, a lot like uh, Kirk. I mean, I was, I was very lucky to have those guys uh, play quarterback uh, here for the last four years. Uh, so I think that's mostly, that's mostly on Andrew, how well he handled it. Uh, and I'm sure he struggled. I know he struggled behind the scenes somewhat. Uh, some of the negativity towards him, uh, but uh, I think he handled it as well as he could, and again, that has a lot to do with him. Uh, as you look forward uh, to uh, the play calling, how it focuses around the quarterback, certainly it does. Uh, our offense is focused around the quarterback. You know, I mean, we're going we're gonna to tailor our offense around what the quarterback does best. Uh, uh, as you look at last year, certainly uh, our pass game was not what we wanted it to be, and that, there's a lot of factors for that. Uh, uh, Andrew needs to play a little bit better. Our offensive line needs to protect a little bit better. Receivers not re- need to run a little bit better routes, catch the ball a little bit better. Backs need to block a little bit better. It's a, it's a full team deal. And uh, as a, a coaching staff, we realize that. So uh, we'll just see how it affects us here in the, in, the, uh, in the months to come, I guess, as we approach the season. But certainly the quarterback is a big part of what you do play calling wise. Absolutely. Dave, uh, the biggest trend in successful offenses in contemporary football is the mobility at the quarterback position. Do you intend to try to incorporate some of that given the skill sets of the different guys you've got or, or how do you try to trend that way a little bit? If, if as, that's on your as, mind? Uh, as our quarterback can uh, execute those sort of plays, uh, we can certainly implement them. And uh, uh, that's not Andrew's strength, but at the same time, I think that he's capable of, of uh, doing a fairly good job of moving around the pocket, uh, you know, whether it's a design quarterback run or whether it's a, a quarterback scramble. That's something that, uh, especially the quarterback scramble, that's something I tried to emphasize with him uh, second half of the year, uh, especially the second half of the year. 
Uh, and moving forward, that's something that uh, uh, we're going to emphasize with Andrew and with those, those younger guys. Uh, how much of the quarterback run game is implemented uh, depends on who the quarterback is and, and how well they can execute it. So question uh, to be answered here probably during spring and into the fall. Dave, with your uh, past experience as a passing game coordinator, I guess, how does that role work? I mean, is it as simple as calling the passing plays and someone else calls the running plays? And what are the differences? And also, do you think you could see some – that could be a role that uh, this could work out between you and Bowman where you would handle passing game duties and he could handle the running game? Uh, really, my only experience of calling pass plays only goes way back to my beginnings at Kansas. Uh, I think it's difficult to to juggle the two, uh, to have two people uh, making that call, just because I mean, who's who's decide whether you're running or passing? You know, and it becomes into a little bit of a tug of war. Not that uh, Coach Bowman and I would do that, but uh, I think it just makes it a little bit. Uh, there's, it allows for some indecisiveness there. Uh, so certainly, I'm I'm very much in favor of just having one play caller, and uh, uh, as long as we can agree during the week. Uh, you know, what our package is in certain situations. Obviously, we have our third down packages and red zone and coming out. And, uh, you know, all that's decided during the week. So it's really just a matter of, uh, uh, of picking the plays and being a little bit creative during the week so you can keep defenses off balance and, and create some big plays, hopefully. Dave, a couple questions. Uh, uh, early thoughts on maybe replacing a Deion Sims and, and a Le'Veon Bell. And also, um, you mentioned the bigger spotlight. I was wondering, uh, you, if you could tell us a little bit more about yourself, your hobbies outside of football, uh, things like that. Uh, as far as uh, replacing those two guys, that's uh, that's going to be tough. You know, we started looking a little bit of cutouts from this past year, and uh, uh, you know, Le'Veon Bell was those were both those guys were our offense. Uh, as you look at some of our run games, uh, some of our run game uh, from this past year, it's hard to imagine it without uh, Le'Veon. Now, at the same time, we have some young guys that I think uh, uh, have a chance of of uh, coming in and doing some good things. Uh, we have some guys on our football team now that are going to get a great opportunity. Uh, Nick Hill's certainly a guy that showed that he can he can do some good things given when he's been in there. Uh, Jeremy Langford's a guy that uh, has bounced around a little bit and sort of settled at running back and uh, has, uh, has shown some good flashes. So uh, the question's out there who that guy's going to be or who those guys are going to be at, uh, at running back. Um, but... Uh, uh, you know, it's going to be very important for us to find an answer to that. Tight end, same deal. Uh, Deion Sims was a go-to guy for us. Uh, uh, who's going to replace him? We don't know. We don't know. Uh, but uh, spring practice is uh, in front of us. That's what we need to find out. We have we only have one tight end coming in as a freshman, uh, Dylan Chimura, uh, who's a big kid that uh, hopefully he's able to uh, come in and show some things. But it's always tough to do to come in. It's, you know, the running back position, sometimes it's a little bit easier to come in and, and, and use your athletic ability to, to play right away. Uh, the closer you get to the line of scrimmage, the harder it is to play right away, I think. But uh, uh, he'll be given some opportunity, that's for sure. Dave, obviously a lot's made of the passing game, the quarterback situation. What about the running game in specific? Uh, uh, what would you like to adjust there? Is it just a matter of executing better, or are there some different things you'd like to do within the running game? Uh, I don't know that we need to do a whole lot different there. Our run game was was really uh, on par to where it's been, and that's not to say it was great, but uh, uh, our run game did not gradually over the last couple of years decrease. Um, we were uh, in the run game uh, seventh in the Big Ten this past year, uh, where previously years we've been fifth, we've been seventh. We've right the, been right at that 4.0 range, which uh, is about where we want to be. Um, so I, I think we're going to stay with what we've been doing a lot. And again, as much as anything, it's going to come down to what our quarterback can do to add some wrinkles um, uh, in our run game, along with uh, you know uh, any possible trick plays that get in there that's going to add to your rushing yardage. But uh, uh, the challenge is out there, certainly, uh, without Le'Veon Bell being the guy carrying the football. The challenge is there for us to, to maintain and hopefully get a little bit better in the run game. Coach, a lot's been made of Andrew's um, intelligence, ability to read defenses. I wonder how much 
freeze did you run last year? And will you run some of that this year, the multiple play calls at the line? I mean, how much control will your quarterback have at the line of scrimmage as these defense seems to get more complicated with their shifts and, and personnel adjustments? I, I think it will be pretty much what we've been over the years. I think uh, our quarterbacks have had a very good understanding of uh, – what we can do run-wise in the defenses, what we can do pass-wise, uh, protections. Uh, you know, that's probably the one thing that our guys did a good job of, of uh, handling the protections, changing protections. I think there's some room uh, for us to continue to, to grow there as far as uh, changing protections uh, to keep us from throwing hot. Uh, but uh, I thought those guys have done a great job over the years, and it's uh, uh, – that's the positive of, of not uh, making major changes uh, in our offense. They basically know, okay, we got a problem here, we got a problem there, and they know what to go to. So uh, they've been good at it. Anything else for Dave? We'll take one more. You mentioned the big spotlight, and uh, I know you, you must have noticed, obviously, that Dan took a lot of heat, especially in the last I, year. I noticed that, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. That give you any – I mean, how much has that changed? How much has that changed in your mind? And maybe, I don't know, social media or whatever it may be. And did that give you any pause seeing, you know, what he went through or the criticism? No, I, at first, uh, absolutely no pause whatsoever. Uh, uh, this has uh, been my goal to get back to a, a position like this as a coordinator. Uh, Certainly, my positions as a coordinator in the past are nowhere close to where I'm at right now, though. Uh, and that would be in the big spotlight. And uh, uh, with the social media, what it is now, obviously, it becomes even uh, even a bigger spotlight. So uh, uh, it's a challenge, you know, uh, but it's something that uh, I've wanted for a long time. The opportunity is here. And uh, I'm certainly anxious, uh, appreciative but very anxious and eager and confident to go about uh, uh, these next couple months and, and years uh, down the road to hopefully, uh, hopefully make us a good offense.